So homogenous talent management needs challenging, actually, for the benefit of organisations. And I think there are some really um, key ways that organisations can do this. One of the best ways, really, is for people to take personal responsibility for this, not to outsource the responsibility to a part of HR or someone else, but actually, what am I doing to challenge this tendency to be around people like me? So this homophily, this association with people that are like you, needs challenging. And one way is thinking about in and out groups. If you think, for example, about your five closest friends in the world and who they are, and your five closest colleagues in the organisation and who they are, your partner, or if it's not going very well, the partner you'd like to have, and then also, for example, where you live, and you think about all these parts of your life that are really important, they tend to be similar people. They tend to be people that reinforce your worldview. And being aware of that in-group is really important because only then can you be aware of your out-group, who's not in that group, and who should you make extra effort to go and meet, extra effort to get to know, be proactive about getting to know those people and bringing them in. And that's a way of challenging homogenous talent management. So I think organisations can do practical things to be more inclusive in the way they recruit, the way they promote, and the way they, they retain talent. Whether it's finding more diversity, growing more diversity, and keeping more diversity. I think in terms of recruitment, an obvious thing they can do is to think about in and out groups. You know, a lot of recruiters are obsessed with fit. You know, will they fit into our culture? And actually, will we fit to other cultures? So actually, how can we look at who's in the out group, who's not in our current talent pool, who's not in our current system or network, and start making proactive attempts to, to reach those people? That will be a way of trying to diversify recruitment. In terms of promotion, I think thinking again about the kind of the quiet you know, stars, the people who don't spring to mind, who aren't forefront of mind, who aren't extrovert or self-promoting. And thinking about, for example, introverts or those with less network you know, uh, connectivity, people who are not in, in the in-groups, and thinking how we can use proportionality as a way of saying, let's get them. For example, if you took just gender as an example, and you had 40% women at grade B, but you only had 20% women at grade A, we would expect, in terms of proportionality, that 40% of promotions from grade B to grade A would be female. And if that isn't the case, it's a check and balance on our bias, it's a check and balance on who we know, who we're favouring, who's self-promoting and so forth, so we get a more rigorous promotion pipeline. And I think in terms of retaining the final aspect, I think leadership's key. Actually talking to people's self rather than just their role, treating them as a human being rather than just a factor of production, appealing to those motivational factors rather than just the basic hygiene or financial factors and getting them to stay uh, with you in, in the job. I think thirdly, in terms of productivity, we know that people perform better when they can be themselves. So if they feel they can bring themselves to work more, they're more likely to deploy discretionary effort. I think fourthly, in terms of decision making, so we know, for example, challenging decisions that diverse teams can outperform homogenous teams, and diverse teams, even of varying IQs, can outperform homogenous teams of similar high IQs. I think finally, ethics. I think that fundamentally there is a crisis of trust between business and society. I think being more inclusive of the people we're supposed to be serving just is only a good thing in terms of trust and credibility with the organisation.